blessed be, my brothers and sisters of the universe. It seemed only fitting to wear my Eiffel Tower shirt today because today we are going to talk about one of my favorite spiritual and historical figures, Joan of Arc. Now I'm sure everyone knows who Joan of Arc was, the famous 15th century French peasant maiden who claimed that the voices of saints and angels had told her that God had chosen her to be the leader of the French army against the English invasion during the Hundred Years' War. But just in case you need a refresher on her life story or you just want to watch a fascinating documentary about her, I will leave a link in the description below to a wonderful documentary that was done on her in the Warrior Women series. And it's a fascinating documentary. It's not very long, probably about maybe an hour, but it's a great documentary and it really shows all the hardships and difficulties that Joan went through. Of course, one of the most famous things about Joan, other than her claim of direct divine inspiration, is the way that she died. She was captured by the English and tried for heresy and all the horrible things they wanted to make her seem out to be so they could claim that God was on their side. And she was executed for it. She was burned at the stake on May 30th, 1431. And in fact, today, May 30th, 2016, marks the 585th anniversary of Joan's death. And ever since Joan's execution, all those centuries ago, she has become a symbol of so many different things to so many different people. And I wanted to share with you who she is to me because she's always been an important figure in my life. I'm not sure when I first heard her story, but I must have been very young because I have a very vivid memory of myself as a seven-year-old watching the Wishbone episode that was done about her. For those of you who don't know, Wishbone was a TV show in the 1990s where a little puppy dog named Wishbone retold classic stories so kids can understand them. And the Joan of Arc episode was based on the book that Mark Twain wrote about her. And I have this very distinct memory of myself as a seven-year-old with a pillowcase tied around my neck for a cape. And I had a dully sharpened pencil in my hand for a sword. And I can remember standing on the couch in my living room, pillowcase cape around my neck and pencil sword in hand going, follow me French hearts, follow me. So. I was always the weird kid who, instead of wanting to pretend to be frilly Disney princesses, I was always like, hey, who wants to play Joan of Arc? I get to be Joan. Who wants to be the English soldiers? So Joan's story has been with me ever since I was little, and it stood out to me as the story of a woman who knew she was meant to have a different path and followed it and didn't care what anyone else said. She knew in her heart that this was the path she was meant to lead. She didn't care if people thought her strange for it or if even if they were going to kill her for it. And that really stuck with me, especially as a child, because I never saw myself growing up to be the stereotypical housewife that little girls are conditioned to want to be from the traditional tellings of fairy tales and modern media. So when I was a kid, there weren't really that many women's stories of girls who broke the mold and girls who diverted from that traditional path, not even in Disney films. And that's why I think the modern generation of young girls are so lucky to have role models like Elsa, and, but that's a whole other story. So anyway, I never saw myself as settling down to be the stereotypical 1950s-esque housewife. Not that that path can't be fulfilling if that's the path someone chooses, but I just never felt called to that path. And especially in regards to kids. Do I want to meet a nice guy and get married? Yes. Do I want us to have a nice life together? Yes. Do I want us to have children? No. I have never had the slightest inkling or desire to have kids, not even when I was a little girl. And of course, all my friends were fantasizing about, oh, when I have babies, that I never got the baby fever, as they say. I consider my stories, my artistic work, those are my kids. And as far as the mother role 
in life. I feel I'm meant to be a community mother where I reach out to society and share my thoughts and change the world and inspire people that way. So I've always felt I'm meant to be a community mother rather than a biological mother. So that's another reason why Joan's story st stood out for me is she didn't settle down. She didn't become a mother. And so, yeah, she was a role model in that regard. And then fast forward years later when I discovered the music of Heather Dale, she has a fantastic song about Joan, which you'll hear soon enough, don't worry. And Heather's relationship with Joan of Arc was a lot like mine, where she admired her for being the girl who broke the mold, who walked her own path, who did all the things that she felt she was meant to do in life. And that's what she wanted her song to be about. And when she brought the idea to her songwriting partner, Ben, he brought up the idea that, yeah, there's that that side of Joan and that take on her story, but, but also it's important to consider that she's a hero to the French and a hero to Christians, but she was also killing in the name of God. And that can be a very slippery, dangerous slope to start sliding down because once you start going down that slope, you start justifying more and more and more. And that really got me thinking, I was like, wow, that's a really good point. I'd never really thought of that because I'd always grown up with the image of Joan as this heroine of, and I'd never really thought about how she could be feared and how maybe she could go too far. Maybe her fame did go to her head because all her voices told her to do was to lift the siege at Orléans and to see the French prince crowned king. And she did those things and then she went on to do other things. She went on to attack further without being told to by her voices and without the king's permission. And it was after those attacks or during those battles where she got captured, the religious leaders of her own faith turned on her and they didn't listen to her because of course, I'm sure they were thinking, what, God speaking to an illiterate peasant girl and he didn't come to one of the, one of us, one of the elite? It's interesting that that's a repeating pattern in Christianity where the religious leaders who think they know everything or people who think they know everything, basically they keep repeating the cycle of putting down the outcast even though Jesus himself was an outcast. And so, yeah, it's ironic. There's definitely a tough side to Joan, and that brings me to my relationship with her now. As I mentioned in other videos, I was raised in the Episcopal Church, so I wasn't raised Catholic. I wasn't raised to really look at the saints as sources of guidance, of inspiration. But I'm very eclectic when it comes to my spirituality, and if you want more info on that, there's a link in the video description to that too. Two of the saints who I work closest with in my daily spiritual meditation and prayer are the first one, and probably the most obvious one, given the fact that I'm visually impaired, is Saint Lucia of Syracuse, who is the patroness of the blind. And her story is basically her martyrdom consisted of her eyes being taken out and she didn't need her physical eyes, she could still see because she was so enlightened. And St. Lucia is a very important figure for me as well. But then also there's St. Joan of Arc. And for me, St. Lucia and St. Joan are the two faces of what it means to strive towards enlightenment and to work at your enlightenment each day. St. Lucia, her energy that I get when I meditate on her is a very warm, very calm, very sweet energy. Almost like if you picture a snowy house on a Christmas card and there's one warm lit candle in the window, that's St. Lucia. St. Lucia is that warm, inviting candle that says, come in, warm yourself, be surrounded by love, by family and friends. So she's very warm and sweet. She's the patroness of the blind, not in the sense of, oh, you poor blind people, let me pray for you. Her essence is you've been blessed with 
a site that not everyone will understand. And I know it's hard when people don't understand, but hang in there because someday they'll understand. By living your life, you'll make them understand. So St. Lucie is a very warm, very gentle sense of enlightenment, of be patient. Those who are meant to understand will understand in time, just hang in there. And St. Joan is a very, she's very much, it's sort of ironic that she was burnt at the stake because she really does have that essence of bright fire, that roll up your sleeves mentality of, okay, you have this gift, you have this enlightenment, you're working towards it, but you need to share what you've been learning. So roll up your sleeves and get out there and go and do it. Even if people laugh at you or call you strange or claiming that you're not following the right way of a certain spiritual path, you have your own spiritual truth. Your soul has been on this journey of seeking spiritual truth for dozens and dozens of lifetimes. Every soul is going on a different journey. Every soul is at, is on a different level of the spiral staircase. So it's important to remember that. And that's what Joan of Arc often reminds me of when I get frustrated I'm like, why don't people understand? Why don't people get it? She's always there to remind me, hey, don't worry about that. You know the path that you're on. You know that it's divinely inspired. You know that you are a child of the divine. And because of that, you are a little piece of the divine. We all have the divine, God, goddess, whatever term you like. We all have that. We all are that. And that's not to say it in an egotistical way, like, oh, I'm, I'm the divine, I can do whatever I want. No, it's not about that. It's about realizing that everyone has that divine essence. We're all like the crystals of a chandelier. The divine is the big light in the middle of the chandelier, and we're all the crystals that have our own little spark of light and we each reflect the light differently. Those are the messages I get from Saint Lucia and Saint Joan when I when I meditate with them and when they appear to me in dreams they're always there to remind me of those things. That's who Joan of Arc is for me, a divine soldier of the light of God and Goddess and I look forward to growing my relationship with her further and I love you, St. Joan. Blessed be St. Joan. And thank you for standing up for what you believed in, for following your own path, for being a role model for all the girls who know that their paths are different. God and Goddess bless you all. Namaste. Blessed be. And with that, I will leave you with Heather Dale's wonderful song, which is on her album The Gabriel Hounds and it is simply called Joan.
bloodied the devil with steel from on high. I kill without consequence, heed no man's law. I sift out the righteous like grain from the straw. I am judgment and heaven. They'll know me as Joe.